Can we just give Jimmy and the team a round of applause, please? How amazing was that today? You know, the Holy Spirit is in this place and it's led by that wonderful team and the, the awesome work that they do, the preparation that they do beforehand is what delivers such a wonderful, wonderful presence of God here today. And it's led in by that team. So we just thank them very much. So communion today. Question is, why do we do communion? Why do we do it? Do we take communion because we always have? Do we do communion because our mums and our dads did it? So we just do it? Do we take communion because every second week this thing shows up at the door and it's like, woo, I'm going to do it because that's what we're doing. Now, I'm sure no one in the room would say yes to those reasons. However, if you were asked why, what would you say? If you were asked why do you do communion, what would you say? I can hear, remember Jesus, I can hear a few things. So I pondered this over the last few weeks. And I found in the red letters (laughs) that Jesus gives several reasons in the book of John as to why we do communion. He puts it this way, eating his flesh and drinking his blood. A bit hard to take a little at times. In the book of John, chapter 6, Jesus is talking to a group of followers and his 12 disciples. And he describes himself as the living bread of life. He, he says the first of seven I am statements in the book of John. And he says, I am the living bread of life. This sparks an argument amongst some of the followers and some of the Jewish people that are there. And so Jesus, in verses 54 through to 58, says... Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. So Jesus is saying we take communion so that we can have eternal life, so we can rise with Jesus at the last day, and so we can abide in Him and He in us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, we are told that when we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's death until He comes. And finally, we're told in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 19, that we take communion in remembrance of Jesus. So why do we do communion? If you are asked, this is why. I'm going to keep it in the the theme of the last several weeks. We do communion so that we have eternal life through Jesus, which means We've given our life to Jesus, and we're remembering that, and we have eternal life through Jesus because we know Jesus. So we can rise up with Jesus at the last day. We do that because we know Jesus. You see, the bread of life is also the word of life. The word of life is Jesus. He was at the beginning. The word was at the beginning. The bread of life, the word of life. It is spirit and it's life, and it is to know him. The next one is to abide in Jesus and Jesus in us. So when we take communion, we are partaking in Jesus. We are abiding 
in Him and Him in us. So that is to be known by Him. And finally, it's to proclaim Jesus' death, which is proclaiming His victory over death. It's proclaiming true life to the world and everyone that believes in Jesus. And that is to make Him known. So next time you're asked, why do you do communion? It's to know Him, to be known by Him, and to let others get to know Him. Yeah, that's why we do it. So please join me today as we give thanks. And we'll take the bread and the juice while we thank God for giving us Jesus, the true reason for communion. So if you want to open that up now. Father, we just thank you right now that through our relationship with Jesus Christ, we have eternal life. We have a partnership with you, the one true living God. And we thank you for that. We thank you, God, that on the last day you will rise us up with you in relationship with you, our heavenly Father. We thank you that we know you and that through your word we continue to know you. We continue to grow in you as you reveal more and more of yourself through your word, your living word. Father, thank you that we can abide in you. And Lord, it's hard to fathom that you want to abide in us, but you do. And we thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you that we are known by you and that we are loved endlessly by you. And Father, we proclaim the death of Jesus Christ. We pro proclaim it now here at church. We proclaim it when we do communion with you. Heavenly Father, we proclaim it in everything that we do, in every part of our life, Father. We proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, that he died for all humanity on that cross, and that through his blood, we are saved, we are set free, and we are healed. I pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Lord. you just turn to the person next to you and just let them know one good thing that happened to you this week? Just one. Contain it at just one. One good thing. I'm hearing a lot of I woke ups. Amen. All right, if I could just have your attention for a moment, we're going we're gonna, to, I need you to buckle yourself in through church life, if that's all right. I need you to listen, please. We've got a few things to get through. Midweek Connect is on this Wednesday, and our final Midweek Connect gathering is Wednesday the 14th, and we'll be celebrating around food, as we usually do. And so the 14th at 10 a.m. will be our final one. Uh, it'll be a bit more... Uh, Carol's focus. We've got a special ukulele guest all the way from Karina. Uh, we're having a meal together, uh, all those sorts of fun things. So if you can make it and have been coming throughout the year, you're most welcome. We're asking if you can bring a plate of your Christmas, favorite Christmas goodies. Um, that would be wonderful. And we'll celebrate together on Wednesday the 14th. So we have three more, when, uh, three more Wednesdays this week, the following week, and the 14th is our final one on Midweek Connect. December and January services, so we did send an email out and there's some flyers at the back, but it's really important to note, we have two more Sunday mornings here at Sheldon for the year. So we have the 4th, which is next week, and the 11th, which is the week after, and then the next two weeks, we've got to change gears a little bit. 
So we're meeting on the Saturday, on the 17th at 5 p.m., will be a Christmas celebration. So we're having our, our, our usual Christmas service, and then we're going to stop for a meal at the end. So we're gathering from 5 p.m. at Capella Bar Place, which is where we hold Midweek Connect. So there's heaps of street parking, there's ample parking around and about. 5 p.m. on Saturday the 17th. And, and again, if you want to bring something to share, that would be wonderful. We do need you to register so we know numbers, if that's okay. So there is a QR code on the flyers that will be available in the foyer. And there, you can also sign up at the info desk. We just need to know, for catering purposes, how many chickens to buy and how many bread rolls to make sure are there. And so if you can let us know, that will be wonderful. So Saturday the 17th of December at 5 p.m., not here, Kapalabar Place, will be our, our Christmas gathering together. So we won't be here the next day on the 18th. You can rock up if you want to, but the doors won't be open. So no Sunday service on the 18th. The next week, which is Christmas week, uh, we're not gathering on Christmas morning. We're going to gather on Christmas Eve. So we're going to have a Christmas Eve chapel service, same time, same place. So 5 p.m., Kapalabar Place. It'll just be an hour-ish service, and we're going to gather together for Christmas Eve. So, so bring your friends, bring your family, invite them along, and that will be at Kapalabar Place as well. So the next two Sundays are normal, and then we switch gears for the 17th and the 24th. They are Saturday evenings, 5 p.m. at Capalaba Place. On the seats um, that you would have had a, a, seat, a copy of, we're entering three days of prayer and fasting to launch 2023. And so on Sunday, the 1st of January at 3 p.m., we've tried to keep it all the same. So it's 5 p.m. for the, those two Saturdays. And then for the three days of prayer and fasting, it's at 3 p.m. for 2023. Do you like that? Uh, and we're going to be gathering at the Redlands Hub, so our, our Weepin Street venue. And we're going to pray and start the year corporately together in three days of prayer and fasting at 3 p.m. at our one of our church locations. <laughs> Amen? You can tell people we have multiple locations depending on, on where you come. Not that it's about that, but anyway. So is everyone okay with that? That's clear. There are flyers at the info desk. Uh, there's, there's information on social media. So thank you for your grace and your understanding. And things are, are beyond our control. But the Lord has provided. And it's okay, isn't it? Awesome. Well, today, no, next week, we've, we've, had, we've got a guest minister today and guest ministers next week. Uh, next week, we've got Pastors Mark and Cindy Chiava coming. So Mark and Cindy lead Centro Church at Bean Lee. They came earlier this year. And so Mark and Cindy uh, will be here next week and will we'll minister beautifully there. I know many of you received prayer ministry from them and were touched mightily. So let them know. Let them know that you, that you received breakthrough or whatever it might be. They're, they're ministering next week. But this week, we have a, a guest all the way from our inner CBD one of, one, of our, one of our own family by extension. So let's welcome Wes as he comes to minister this morning. Thank you, Aaron. What a joy to be here this morning. God's moving, isn't he? Oh, let's just take a moment. Uh, you know, see, I'm wearing t shirts so we're going to do this right now. God, what's on your heart for me now in this service? God has brought you here for a reason, and He wants to do something specific with you this morning. So I want you to take a moment now and ask Him, God, what's on your heart for me right now during this service? Okay, a couple of people, shout out what God said to you.
forgiveness. Sorry, the servant's heart. To walk with him. Two more. Grace and compassion. Jinky. To pray for our kids more. Yeah. You know, I am sensing that there's been a bit of a shift that God is doing in the church at the moment. A shift from coming to see someone perform and listening to what God has given to that person to God speaking to us individually. And then as we gather corporately together, we share that which God has been speaking to us about in our community. And some of you know I do this listening prayer thing on Wednesday mornings and I just it's been highlighted to me again and again that we hear the voice of God in community. So I want to encourage you to do something very practical this morning. So you have live stream here on the church. I want you to go on the Facebook page after the service, not actually now, <laughs> and write what God spoke to you about at the start of the service and then how God unpacked that. Because as we start to share with each others what's going on, others get to know, hang on a minute, oh, I got the same thing. So that was God that was speaking to me. So when, because I think that's one of the things he wants us to hear much more clearly at this time, to know that he speaks to us individually and that we can hear his voice clearly. Because we are facing some very interesting times, aren't we? And we need to know what, it's easy to listen to the media, it's easy to listen to our friends and our family, but hang on a minute, what is God saying to us? So one of the main ways, of course, that he speaks to us is through his word. Yes. So we're going to read Deuteronomy 1 this morning. Why are we reading Deuteronomy 1? Because you guys are in a season of preparation for entering into the promised land. Is that right? So what's Deuteronomy about? It's all about remembering what God has done before you enter into that land. So in this season of not knowing which building I need to go to today, <laughs> it's a season of preparation. It's a season of realignment. It's a season of, okay, God, prepare me for what's on your heart. And that, that's really what Deuteronomy 1 is about. So let's read this together. This is what Moses said to Israel in the Transjordan wilderness, in the arid rift valley opposite, and great names here, Suf between Paranam and, you know, all those places. You've got them there. Now it, was, <laughs> now it is ordinary an 11-day journey from Horeb to Gadesh Barnea by way of Mount Seir. However, it was not until the first day of the 11th month of the 40th year Oh, God, may this be a quick journey for you guys. That Moses addressed the Israelites just as the Lord had instructed him to do. This took place after the defeat of King Sihon of the Amorites, whose capital was in Heshbon, and King Og of Bashan, whose capital was in Azareth, specifically in Edirei. So it was in the Transjordan in Moab that Moses began to deliver these words. The Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb and said, You have stayed in this area of this mountain long enough. Head out and resume your journey. Enter the Amorite hill country and all its neighboring areas, including the Rift Valley, the hill country, the foothills, the Negev, and the Gosal plain of all Canaan and Lebanon, as far as the great river that is the Euphrates. Look, I have already given the land to you. Go occupy the territory that I the Lord promised to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their descendants. I also said to you at that time, I am no longer able to sustain you by myself. The Lord your God has increased your population to the point that you are now as numerous as the very stars of the sky. That was Abraham's vision. Indeed, may the Lord, the God of our ancestors, make you a thousand times more numerous than you are now, blessing you just as he would. But how can I alone bear up under the burden of your hardship and strife? Select wise and practical men, those known among your tribes, whom I appoint as your leaders. 
You replied to me that when I had said to you was good. So I chose as your tribal leaders wise and well-known men, placing them over you as administrators of groups of thousands, hundreds, fifties and tens, and also of other tribal officials. I furthermore admonish your judges at this time that they should pay attention to the issues among your fellow citizens and judge fairly, whether between one person and a native Israelite or a resident foreigner. They must not discriminate in judgment, but hear the lowly and the great alike, nor should they int be intimidated by human beings, for the judgment belongs to God. If the matter being adjudicated is too difficult for them, they should bring it before me for a hearing. So I instructed you at that time regarding everything you should do. Then we left Horeb and passed through all that immense forbidding wilderness that you saw on the way to the Amorite hill country, as the Lord our God had commanded us to do, finally arriving at Kadesh Barna. Then I said to you, you have come to the Amorite hill country, which the Lord our God is about to give us. Look, he has placed the land in front of you. Go up and take possession of it. Just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, said to do, do not be afraid or discouraged. So all of you approached me and said, let's send some men ahead of us to scout out the land and bring us back word as to how we should attack it and what the cities are like there. This is a very interesting phrase. Moses said, I thought it was a good idea. Did he actually ask God? I have been so struck on that. I'd always assumed, I don't know why I assumed that sending the spies into land was God's idea. Well, of course it wasn't because it didn't work out the way God wanted it to be. I'm going to talk about this later on, sorry. I, I, I guess, I, yeah. So I sent 12 men from among you, from one from each tribe. They left and went up to the hill country, coming to the Esco Valley, which they scouted out. Then they took some of the produce of the land and carried it back to us. They also brought a report to us saying, the land the Lord our God is about to give us is good. It's good what God's about to do. You were not willing to go up, however. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to grab people and just shake, you slap them around the face. You know? But we can't judge these guys because how many times have we done this ourselves? You were not willing to go up, however, but instead rebelled against the Lord your God. You complained among your, yourselves privately. I hope you guys are not doing that. And said, because the Lord hates us, he brought us from Egypt to deliver us from the Amorites so they could destroy us. What is going to happen to us? Our brothers have drained away our courage by describing people who are more numerous and taller than we are and great cities whose defenses appear to be as high as heaven itself. Moreover, they said they, said they saw Anakites there. So I responded to you, do not be terrified of them. The Lord your God is about to go ahead of you. He will fight for you just as you saw him do in Egypt and in the wilderness where you saw him carrying you along like a man carries his son. This he did everywhere you went until you came to this very place. However, through all this, you did not have confidence in the Lord your God. Oh, have you lost your confidence in the Lord your God? Who would go before you on the way to find places for you to camp, appearing in a fire at night and a cloud by day, and to show you the way that you ought to go. When the Lord heard you, he became angry and made this vow. Not a single person of this evil generation will see the good land that I promised to your descendants. That's three million people. That's a lot of bodies. The exception is Caleb, son of Jephunneh. He will see it and I will give him and the descendants the territory on which he has walked because he has wholeheartedly followed me. As for me, the Lord was also angry with me on your account. He said, you will also not be able to go there. However, Joshua, son of Nun, your assistant, will go. Encourage him because he will enable Israel to inherit the land. Also, your infants who you thought would die on the way and your children who as yet do not know good from bad will go there. That's a promise to us parents. Our children will go there. I will give them the land and they will possess it. But as for you, turn back and head for the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. 
Then you responded to me and admitted, we have sinned against the Lord. We will now go up and fight as the Lord our God has told us. So each of you put on your battle gear and prepared to go up to the hill country. But the Lord told me, tell them this, do not go up and fight because I will not be with you and you will be defeated by your enemies. I spoke to you, but you did not listen. Instead, you rebelled against the Lord and recklessly went up to the hill country. The Amorite inhabitants of that area confronted you and chased you like a swarm of bees, striking you down from Seir as far as Hormah. Then you came back and wept before the Lord, but paid no attention to you whatsoever. Therefore, you remained at Kadesh for a long time, indeed for the full time. Ooh, there's a lot in there, isn't there? There's a reason I've given you this sheet of paper, and you can see that there's numbers up the top here, one to seven. That's because you've got homework to do, haven't you? You're going to go home. You're going to sit down. You're going to read through this at least seven times. And then you're going to do it every day this week. As See, this is the teacher coming out of me. Why? Because we need to. Do you know what I have found? Is that the more we go on with Christ, the more we become familiar with Scripture. And the more we read it and we say, I know what this says. And you don't stop and go back to it. It's time to slow down. What did I preach on last time I was here? Linger longer. Is Linger longer in the Word of God. Because there's some stuff we've missed as we've gone through. But not any, but it's not it's not just that. You're in a different season. It's it's time for a fresh word for you, for the season that you're in now and we need to take some time for that so there's some things that i've been sitting on this for about five weeks now and i've been reading this passage for and i even just then as i read it there was something else god spoke to me about i'm thinking i can't fit that in god anyhow let's see how we go some things are the powerpoints up so the title for the message this morning is remembering what god has done in order to move forward So I want to talk about first that God speaks in wilderness seasons. There's a lot of, at that top of that chapter, he was explaining the wilderness season where they were. And later on, it talked about the foreboding wilderness. I don't care what season you're in. God still speaks to you. I don't care if you're deep in sin at the moment. God will still speak to you. It's not, you do not have to be sinless for God to speak to you. Otherwise, you're not looking, you're not reading the Bible. How many times did God speak to those who weren't his children? He, you know, we can't discount that those that, of your friends and family that don't know God, that God is speaking to them. So whether you're in a wilderness season or not, God still speaks. So listen for him. What is he saying to you at that time? Second one, don't you be the cause of delay in moving forward. Don't you be the cause of the delay. It wasn't God's reason for not. He wanted them to go into the promised land. But don't you be the cause of that. That's hard. I know that's hard. Because there's a number of times I know that I've been the cause of delay. You know, for those of us who have wives, you know, did you phone them today? Did you send that email? Did you do that? Did, does anyone else get those messages or just me? Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, because sometimes we're afraid of what's going to happen when it do, or we just think of the consequences of that. You know, for some of you know, we celebrate one year this week of moving into uh, our apartment in South Brisbane. You know, when God moved us in 10 days, that was very quick. <laughs> Very quick. But I look back on what God has done with us in the last 12 months. And like it totally upended my life, our lives. But you know, and I still, you know, when you live in a place for more than 20 years, you know how to get everywhere from that house. I don't know how to get everywhere anymore. You know, like it's just, it's like when I go out, I think, how the heck do I get there now? You know, but this is it. God is wanting to rewire us, wanting to step us out. We used to know the way things used to be done. 
we've had three years of upendedness. You know, we're not going back to what we thought was normal. It's not happening. God, what is this new season? What does it look like? And I get reminded of that every time I hop in the car to go out the door. I don't know where to go. You have stayed here long enough. It's time. It's time to shift. What is the thought pattern that you've had that you've been stuck with with so long? I can't do that. They'll say no. I can't change. I can't learn something new. I don't know. What is it? Maybe that's the thing to say to God. God, what do, what do I need to change? Where am I stuck at the moment that we need to move forward? Next question for you. What has God promised you that you have not taken hold of? This promise for the children of Israel was God gave to Abraham. He said to him, see these stars? You're going to have that many kids. And Moses said, it's been fulfilled. It's been fulfilled. What is the promise that God spoke to you about that as yet has not been fulfilled? You know, December, January is a good time because we start to slow down. We start to do things. Well, maybe after Christmas, is that right? During that Christmas New Year break where we can't remember what day it is and who's doing what and all that stuff. Don't waste it this year. Take time during that time. To say, okay, God, let's reflect. Um, next week, we're about to leave the country for the first time. I don't know how long. It, uh, my daughter, Bethany, said to me at the start of the year, I want to go to the Middle East for Christmas. And I said, yes. But it's one thing to say yes at the start of the year. It's another thing when you're about to hop on a plane and spend three weeks with your daughter traveling around. So now Pam and Eli and... Bethany and I are flying to Singapore next week for a week, and then Pam and Eli are visiting my brother-in-law in the U.S., and Bethany and I are going to trek around Israel and Egypt for three weeks. The app, I am very apprehensive about this, but as I've been talking to God about it, he said, I need to get you out of your routine. There's some stuff I need to speak to you about, and I can't do that where you are. Sometimes we've got to be very deliberate about stopping something for the new to come you're doing that and god uses those things you know sometimes we get very all um anxious about things but it's like hang on a minute you know god tends to orchestrate some things have you noticed that or is it just me yes yes it's very real so it's time to ask god to remind you of those promises what are those promises that perhaps are yet unfulfilled But then there's the next question. Or does God want to release a fresh promise to you? Because it's a new season. uh, Like this year has been a sad year. You know, we've uh, three close friends have passed away this year. And I just, you know, one of them I met with every Wednesday morning for five years. And now when I turn on the Zoom, he's not there. (laughs) His heart. But, you know, God used that too to do different things. And it's um, in a new season. You know, there might be some stuff, you know, friends and family who have passed away. It may be you've had a change of job. You've you had to step away from your profession or somebody sold your church building on you, you know. <laughs> Don't know who would have done that. But you're in a new place. You're in a new season. And it's not, it's not going to change. You're in a new place. God, what do you want to release to me in this new place, in this new season? I want to remind you that God's heart is always to bless you. Right from the start, when we were created, Genesis 3, he, when he created us, he blessed us to be fruitful and multiply. Why on earth did God release the blessing song at the beginning of the pandemic? I checked the other day, 80 million views, like huge. It was a reminder for us that no matter what season we're going through, 
God's heart is always to bless. And even through the difficult times, his heart is to bless. And I, I had to bite my tongue a bit this week. You know, I've been doing that a lot lately. It's maybe it's time my tongue is getting a bit sore. Um, but it, it, I was meeting with this guy. He just said to me, mate, your default position is that God is an ogre in heaven ready to punish you. Our default position needs to be that God is there to bless us. That's a very, very different perspective on it. Yes, things are not going to go the way we plan them to be. But God's position is to how is he going to bless us in this situation? He talked about there that God blessed them a thousand times more. That's huge. Deuteronomy 28 about the blessings that God has for us in doing this. Uh, for me, this has been a year of putting big boy pants on. <laughs> but even Eli said to me the other day, Dad, it's time to put your big boy pants on again. <laughs> I think, you're 11. What are you doing telling me that? <laughs> we had a very difficult situation with a client this year. We lost $250,000 in... The day after, I was sitting in this meeting with the solicitors to try and get it back. So I had, so I was a little bit intimidated in this meeting because I had five top solicitors were discussing it. But whatever they were talking about was going to cost me more money and time. And I said, guys, that's not the solution I'm after. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to pay you more money because I think part of the reason we're in this situation is because of the money I've paid you to do what you've done before. So I, I just was listening at the same time. I said, God, what's your plan for this situation? I'm hearing experts say what their plan is, and I'm not liking it, but what's your plan? Anyhow, the end result of that, we claim back $160,000 through my suggestion. <laughs> well, actually, it wasn't my suggestion. It was God's suggestion. But I put it to the solicitors and... Four of them said, you can't do that. And one of them said, why can't he do that? And, and yeah, the agreement was that I needed to go directly to the people and make the proposal. So, do you know how to pick up a phone? I had to pick up a phone this year and sell a building to someone I didn't know for $3.4 million. Like, he took my call and I asked him, would you buy this building? And he said... 24 hours later, he said, yes. Like, I never met this person. He didn't know me. Like, it was just on a recommendation from someone. I thought, well, if I can do that, I can do other things too, can't I? It's time to... When God whispers to you and says you to do something that is outside of what your normal thing is, he's going to go with you as you do that. Keep it up. Keep it doing. We're going to try and watch a video now. Darren's got the sound. Sometimes it drops out. So, mate. Okay, what you're going to do is read the words. I got curious looked up the Hebrew definition of the word I am, and it literally means, and it came to pass. And so this is a warning for some of you and encouragement for others. Guard your mouth for the last few months of this year. When you say things like, I am sick, I am poor, I am frustrated, I am weak. Those aren't just light words. By the very definition of the word, you're saying, I command being sick to come to pass. Once you release the words, I am out of your mouth, you are releasing the power of the gray I am to attach to those words, good or bad, for it to come to pass. Your words have no sense of humor. They don't know that you're just joking. Your words are on assignment to bring to pass whatever you say. So line up with the prophetic word over your life. Joshua chapter 21 verse 45 says, There felt not all any good thing that the Lord has spoken over the house of Israel. It all came to pass. So partner with the prophetic word. Begin to decree what you want to see and 
sometimes you just got to decree the opposite of what you don't want to see. But stop saying, I am what you don't want to see. Ooh. TikTok is good for some things. Hey? So uh, thank you, Brad, for sharing the I am. You talked about the I am in your communion message this morning. You know, a number of years ago, I was doing a financial seminar and I was just lying in bed in that morning and thinking, God, how long do we have to keep doing these things before we start to see some change? And he said to me, Wes, take those blessings in Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 17 and turn them into I am statements. Turn them into I am statements. And then... Um, you know, as I did that, when we did that that day, and it just brought a change. You know, and then, so some of you are struggling with some stuff. Take the word of God and change it into I am statements. A couple other things. One, we've got to pursue wisdom. Now is the time for pursuing wisdom. Uh, Moses stood in there. I've put wise men above you. So, uh, Solomon, Solomon talked about pursue it. Ask for it. Get it. God, what do I need to study? What do I need to learn? The sevenfold spirit of God is the spirit of wisdom. All those New Testament prayers always have in there, they're praying for you to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Dare to be Daniel. He was 10 times more wise. You look at the situation that those boys were in, four of them in. They became eunuchs. You know what that means, don't you? Like their literal manhood was taken away. You're worried about someone changing a law. It's like they had physical body changes. Anyway, I'm not going to go there because they're going to have conspiracy theories coming out of me. But they, they pursued God and they pursued his wisdom for the situation that they were in. Daniel became in charge of all, of all the, um, the um, soothsayers and all those kind of things. Can you imagine that? Do not be intimidated by fear. Do not be intimidated by human beings. I, conversation I had lately with people who were worried about the LGBT community. Why are you so fearful of them? Build relationship with them. Talk with them. They're not going to bite you. You're not going to eat you. You're not going to. But it, it may not be just that. There may be other communities that you're frightened. Do not be afraid of humans. Follow God's directions. Linger longer. Go for God's ideas, not man's ideas. I don't want you stuck for 40 years before going into the promised land. It may sound good, but is it God's idea? Or is it man's idea? And if that means taking a little bit longer just to get it confirmed, you know the only way you're going to know is actually if you do it. If God speaks to you, the only way you're really going to know if it is God is to do it. It's time. And I know that, you, look, it's not easy. I can stand here and say that, but I can tell you the number of times I've trembled in my boots as God has said something to me and then go do it. Like, and then... You know, the relief when you realize that actually that was God. But, you know, even if it doesn't come out the way you think, I, I was reflecting on this the other day. I can remember, you know, prior to having kids, we are trying to have kids, and Pastor Nick got me to read this passage of Scripture about that we will have a son, and, you know, I was reading this, and um, so we didn't find out what we were having for our first child. We didn't find it, because I just assumed God had spoken to me, and it was a boy. So when Johanna came out and she was a girl, that was a real shock. But you know, the funny part of that was that two weeks later, Pam and I were reading it, that promise. We were never going to name Johanna, Johanna. We changed her name just before she was born. But do you know what Johanna means? It's the female version of John. God answered that. It just was different to the way I thought it was. But it was like God saying to me, you didn't listen to me the whole way. You assumed. Like, this is one of the things, and I think I spoke about this last time, that when God speaks, we filter it through our own things. 
you know, and we think, oh, I know what that means. No, you don't. You may. I know I haven't got at you this week, but go back to him and ask him first. Like, it's, he is issuing you an invitation. When he's speaking to you, that's an invitation for you to be God with skin on to the situation. I have been pondering this whole thing that we're seated in the heavenly places with Christ. And I was going out to a meeting just recently. I had to speak at that night. And, and I was like, God, what does this mean? God, what does this mean? And when I got to the meeting, as a group I speak at regularly, there was a couple there. And I just shivers went down my spine because I thought, oh, God. Like, it's, it's fantastic that they were there. But I just didn't want them to be put into a leadership position. Like, it was like God kind of, yes. So I thought, God, what do I do? And um, I know the leader very well, and him and I were having a private conversation, and I said, oh, I see so and so are here. Have you had a good conversation with them? And he said, yeah, actually, I spoke with them today, and there was all these red flags. And I said, yes, please welcome them. Let them join the community, but don't, whatever you do, put them into a leadership position. And um, I was going home and thinking, like, if someone found out that I'd said that, I'm going to get slapped like nobody's business. Um, <laughs> always happens to me. But I was going home and I was pondering that. And you know what he said to me? He said, Wes, I'm about bringing heaven on earth, but I'm going to use you to do it. So when you're seated in heavenly places, that means you're having conversations with me and you're hearing from me what wants to happen. But then you've got to go out and bring order. And he was just telling me, in that situation, I needed you to bring order. You know, it, um, it wasn't to put them there. It was just a, it's kind of, you know. There are situations God's going to use you to bring order in, which is going to bring heaven to earth. It may be one or two words that are spoken that just brings life to someone. It may be you're, I don't know, in a school system and you're asking God, God, how do I bring about change? And he gives you the idea for that. It's a, you know, sometimes I think we're looking for a, um, a Red Sea experience or a dramatic experience. But you know, a lot of times it's actually just God moves very quietly. It's just as common spoken. I was in another meeting on Monday and I, it was just something came up and I'd already spoken to the guy about it and I thought, here I go again. I feel like I'm a clanging cymbal, you know, but this time I had someone else with it. And I said to them, guys, have you thought about doing it this way? And the other guy said, that's the missing part that we're looking for. And I thought, oh, thank God I spoke up. It doesn't always get accepted, by the way. <laughs> Be prepared for that. But you know what? Sometimes it may not get accepted in the room. Three months later, Hmm, that's very interesting, isn't it? But you keep your mouth shut. Because you did what God called you to do. What happens if you don't do these things? You lose courage. You lose courage. Rebellion comes in. Fear comes in. Disappointment with God comes in. These guys had a fire at night and a cloud by day. <sighs> too many bodies. We've had too many bodies. Too many bodies. Because we haven't done things God's way. And you get stuck. So, some of you know I'm very big on two chairs. Does God know your situation? Is it too hard for him to handle? Does God have a good plan for you? Ask him. Please ask him. I don't know how much I can beg you to take time. If, when you're driving along, picture Jesus in the front seat with you. Have a conversation with him. Turn off the radio. Turn off the worship music. God, I need to hear directly from you. What is it? It may he may only speak one word. I'm going to finish with this. I went to a, I was at a pastor's meeting one day on Tuesday. 
We've been through a very traumatic time over the last three years, haven't we? It has been traumatic. Um, I've spoken to a number of people who've moved up from Melbourne and they talk about how they're struggling with PTSD from everything that they've gone through. But it's uh, like things are just, but it's not just the th last three years. Stuff has happened in church. Stuff has, I think God wants to heal us of the trauma to move us forward. So this is where I'm going to end today. Why don't you stand? Has God spoken to you today? Has he answered what he said to you at the start? <laughs> just, just have a quick conversation with God. God, is there any specific trauma that you want to heal me of now? It may be the trauma of having to make decisions. It may be the trauma of you losing a loved one or what someone said to you or was done to you. Father, thank you for your love and compassion for each one here in this room. Father, we just receive your healing today. Father, I'm asking that you put your finger on that area of trauma and I'm asking that you bring healing in Jesus' name. Father, however, whatever that looks like, whatever that's needed to be done, Father, whether that's a change in attitude, a change in mindset, whether that's a need for forgiveness, Father, whether that's you just putting your hand on a particular part of their body, whatever it is, Jesus, we ask that you would heal them of that trauma right now. Set them free. Set them free. Set them free so they can draw a line in the sand today to move forward and do that which you've called them to do. Father, release fresh promises today. Lord, over this Christmas, New Year season, Lord, as they take the time just to sit with you, may they hear so clearly, so clearly in Jesus' name.